Walgreens. Hey guys, what's up? I'm here at Walgreens. I have a few things to pick up and I thought I would just buzz through the skincare section and see, see what there is. Oh, check it out, you guys. I've never seen this brand before. How to wash. They have a fragrance-free hand soap that gives you instructions on how to wash your hands. I love that. That is so good. They also have a lavender scent and an ocean air and a fresh limon. I have to pick that up. Yeah. I've got the, uh, I've got the roller buggy. Those of you with curly hair, have you checked out this coconut curls? I've never seen this brand. Plant 7 Active Zero, is that what it's called? This looks promising. It's kind of like vitamins. Of course all of these shampoos have fragrance, but... Biotin in shampoos mostly just binds onto your hair shaft and kind of helps with reducing breakage and frizziness. Same thing with keratin. And now marine extracts like kelp and seaweed really hold on to a lot of water and help hydrate the skin and the hair. They're common ingredients. Tea tree, often in, often in shampoos targeting dandruff along with peppermint. They always love to put that mambo combo in things. Both of those though really can cause a lot of irritation on the scalp and they don't do any, well I shouldn't say that. Tea tree oil can reduce dandruff but it's more likely to cause uh, contact dermatitis because it's not a pure substance and it can degrade it de because it's not a pure substance each of the co compounds within it is it's very variable and they can degrade and become very allergenic hemp is definitely having a moment right now hemp seed oil is rich in fatty acids that are good for both the skin and the hair so that's cool coconut as i've said in many videos is great for uh, reducing high growth fatigue. It's really moisturizing for the hair. It can cause acne, however, so that's the downside of it, but otherwise. These look promising. The Neutrogena Anti-Residue Shampoo is really good for removing um, buildup. Uh, you, you can use it once a week. It does have um, sodium lauryl sulfate in it, a uh, surfactant, which is great at removing buildup, but I do know a lot of people with textured hair prefer to avoid sulfate surfactants because uh, they can they can be uh, they can be drying, but they're really effective for removing buildup. You need you kind of need something tough like that to remove a lot of product buildup. Speaking of products for textured hair, you guys, I actually bought this and love it personally. It is a shampoo, um, but it's an interesting formulation. It foams up. It's almost, it, it's kind of like a micellar water almost. But what I like about this is that it has salicylic acid in it, which is good for reducing oiliness on the scalp and uh, kind of helping with scalp buildup and dandruff. And I've been loving this personally. I, I'm using it currently. I, I alternate it with my Function of Beauty shampoo and conditioners. But what I also like about it is that it's got this little tip, so you can just direct it to your scalp. And so that's what I've been doing. I don't lather this to my hair strands. I think if you have more textured, textured hair, you might find that if you lather this on your hair strands, that it makes them kind of a little dull and dry afterwards. Um, but I just put it directly on my scalp and this is all I use. I don't follow this. This one I don't follow up with a conditioner and it is, I love it. It makes my hair feel really clean, looks clean. I, I have the kind of hair that will look greasy and it makes my hair really bouncy. I don't have to use conditioner with this. I, I strongly recommend it. I've been using it for several weeks now. I saw it originally in Sally Beauty Supply and I was honestly, to be frank, I was intrigued by the packaging and then I saw some videos of, of it on YouTube. It kind of gets mixed reviews on YouTube. Some people like it and some people don't, but I gave it a try. It obviously has fragrance, but the scent is not bad. I actually like the scent. So yeah, I, I definitely recommend this. But if you use it and you have more textured hair, you might want to follow it up with a conditioner afterwards. You probably will need to. How does this stuff still exist? Sun in? 
<sighs> what exactly was in this? Is it just lemon juice? Yeah. Oh my god, that's so bad for your hair. It just bleaches it. It'll fry your hair. So in my video on hairstyles that damage your hair, I pointed out that using um, long extra hold, long wear hold, whatever they're called, uh, hair gels that, that hold for a long time, can, if, if the hair gel has a lot of alcohols in it, it can dry out the hair, this, the hair shaft, and the little baby hairs around your edges uh, can be, become more vulnerable to breakage. But I was looking at this Shine and Jam. Okay, I totally love the name of this. This looks like a promising one. It doesn't have any alcohols in it. Obviously, it has fragrance, which can be irritating, and it also has lanolin in it, which is moisturizing, but... So it has fragrance and lanolin. Those two things you can become allergic to, but otherwise this looks pretty moisturizing. Comment below and if you've used Shine and Jam. Honey has a lot of humectants in it. <clears throat> the Kinky Curly one also looks pretty good. Um, it doesn't have any drying alcohols and it's cruelty free. Um, and it also has marshmallow. Now marshmallow is anti-inflammatory. This actually looks good. It doesn't have any Oh, it does have fragrance, okay. Yeah, I struggle. Vanny Cream makes a hair gel that's free of fragrance. I don't know how good it is, honestly. I mean, I don't use hair gel, but, um, so I frequently recommend that one because it's free of fragrance. And then the brand Know Nothing has a um, hair gel that's free of fragrance and is moisturizing. I'll link those down below for you guys if you're in the market for a fragrance-free hair gel. Ooh, Planet Goody came out with these more bougie claws. You guys know I can't live without these. I actually need some more. And I kind of like these colors. I think I'm going to put them in the basket. A tisket, a tasket. People are always asking me to review Palmer's. Um, so, you know, obviously, I think every single Palmer's product has fragrance in it. Um, but beyond that, like the consistencies are really nice and thick and they are really moisturizing. This is a nice thick cream. Unfortunately, you know, it does have fragrance. I like cocoa butter. It's a good ingredient in moisturizers. Now this coconut body oil, I, one thing you can use this for, similar to how I use the Neutrogena body oil, is as an oil cleanser. It has, emo it has peg 40 in it. So it'll help, that peg 40 will help it rinse off. They add it to these body oils because it also helps it uh, not leave grease stains behind on your clothing. Um, but it'll, it'll help it rinse off. And this, you know, obviously, like I said, all these products have fragrance, but this has some nice oils in it and will help break up uh, water resistant sunscreen and mascara. And then you can just wash it or, It'll help break up water resistant sunscreen, mascara, makeup, and then you can just, after you, after you work this all over your face, and you can just wash it off in the shower with a gentle cleanser. That really helps um, break up uh, dirt and whatnot, and ends, ends up leaving your skin not as stripped as if you just try and scrub stuff off. Yeah, cocoa butter was not shown to be helpful for preventing stretch marks or improving the appearance of existing stretch marks. But, um, nor was argan, actually I don't think they looked at argan oil. The only ingredients that uh, have helped improve the outcome of stretch marks are hyaluronic acid and centella, and then retinol can help as well. Um, uh, but retinol is not intended to be used during pregnancy, but yeah, um, there's nothing in this that has been shown to improve stretch marks is what I'm getting at. So it looks like Vichy has two chemical sunscreens. When we were in, when we were in Walgreens the other day, I looked at their new mineral sunscreen that's tinted and I pointed out that, or was it tinted? I can't remember. I pointed out that it's just titanium dioxide. So not as comprehensive of the UVA range, but they've got two chemical sunscreens here that look promising. Uh, both are fragrance free, I believe. This one definitely is. Um, they're chemical, so no cast. Vichy is, I think, a L'Oreal company. Don't quote me on that. But they do stabilize. Yeah, it is. They do stabilize their, the Ava Benzone. So you have that. I'm honestly not too sure what the difference between these two are, other than the obvious 50 versus 60, but that's kind of splitting hairs. Um, but the, 50 is $25 and the 
60. The lotion is $30, five ounces. I'm guessing is the, is the 50, they say Shaka. I wonder if it's a liquid. Oh, Vichy has an antiperspirant. Is it an antiperspirant or a deodorant? Yeah, this is just, um, this is just deodorant, so it's just perfume. I wouldn't use this. It's not gonna really help with the body odor issue. It's just gonna add perfume to your skin. And then your when your sweat and the bacteria mix with the perfume, it ends up breaking that down and making it smell even worse. <laughs> I'm loving the Melton sunscreen milk. So if you use these, fine, but just make sure you wash it off with a gentle cleanser because this will leave stuff behind on the skin that you that can be very irritating. And I definitely don't recommend makeup remover wipes. They just don't, they don't work. Um, well, these don't uh, claim to not have fragrance. That's great. But they just move the cosmetics around on your face. They don't really break them up much. They leave behind a film. They don't really effectively clean the skin at all. And allergies to the preservatives are really common. Plus they're bad for the environment. In the compensating complex. That sounds like a personality disorder. Neo Vidal. Uh, I'm suffering with a compensating complex. Yeah, this is just a moisturizer with perfume in it. It's got fragrance and then jasmineates, uh, methyl hydro jasmineate. That also is a fragrance compound, I believe. Yeah, methyl hydro jasmineate. The jasmineates, they're uh, from jasmine, they're, they're fragrancy. I would skip this. The fishy stuff is so expensive too. It's it's because it creates a you know sense of luxury. What's the radiance boosting serum with licorice root extract? Now licorice root definitely can improve the look of hyperpigmentation. It's anti-inflammatory and can and can calm down redness. But citrus flavonoid. Which is good if they didn't put fragrance in it. Um, I recommend another product instead that has a liquid truth that's really good. It's called it's called Procure Rosacare. I'll list it down below. You can get it at CVS or Walmart. Oopsie. Or another liquid root product that's really good but takes forever to get in from the Amazonian is that, is that uh it's skin li effector it has licorice root in it it's really good actually now the palmer skin success anti-dark spot fade milk is a good product to use to fade hyperpigmentation on oops i almost dropped it there it, to fade hyperpigmentation on the body it has two percent hydroquinone um and it also has a filter that will block uvb that, so this isn't broad spectrum but that's good that it has that at least because uh it adds sun protection, some sun protection, not enough. Um, so if you use this, what I'm getting at is, yeah, it's great. It has that UVB filter in there, but that's not enough. You you still really need to use sun, sunscreen in order for this to be effective. Um, but it also has alpha hydroxy acid, which can actually increase the efficacy of the hydroquinone. It just kind of smooths out the surface of the skin and allows it to get in better. Pretty much all the over-the-counter hydroquinone products have uh, fragrance in them, but this is the kind of thing that you can use for several months. It will help inc it will help accelerate the rate of clearance of hyperpigment post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, dark marks, but um, it's not something you want to use indefinitely. Um, just several months, and if you don't start seeing benefit with it, then you know it's probably not going to fade the type of hyperpigmentation that you have. Um, it can be very irritating, unfortunately. I always recommend the Ambi Fade Cream. Um, it tends to be pretty good as well. I honestly don't know what the major difference between the normal skin and the oily skin is. Probably just, I think the oily skin one has a slightly different color packaging. More or less the same. Cetaphil is all up in the makeup removing wipe game. I mean, I swear, if you have a skincare brand and it's a drugstore, you almost have to have makeup wipes. Have you guys noticed that? Like, other skincare companies, they don't necessarily do the makeup wipe thing, but if it's like if it's a drugstore brand, they're somehow obligated to do it. 
if you have a skincare brand, it's a rule that you have to have an eye cream no matter who you are what you are so like don't get mad at skincare companies for making eye creams there's such a demand for them that they almost have to in order to compete compete in the market but it's like if you're a drugstore skincare brand then you also have to have makeup wipes they're just the rules i i don't make them up but i'm aware of them Ooh, what is this pond's spf down here i'm gonna bet that this has fragrance in it but it looks yeah, it does. This is a combination sunscreen. The cast on this should be actually not too, too bad. Uh, combination sunscreens, they have zinc and then a UVB filter. And they usually are pretty, pretty acceptable in terms of the cast, uh, given that they have zinc. They're, they're actually pretty, pretty good. But I wish I didn't have fragrance in it. I'm sure this one does too. Off hydroxy acid. Now, the FDA requires uh, skincare companies to put a warning on products if they have alpha hydroxy acid in them. Uh, you have to wear um, sunscreen that it can increase your risk of a burn unless the alpha hydroxy acid is in a product that is a sunscreen and has sunscreen in it. They don't have to put that on there. And basically what that, ha what that means is alpha hydroxy acids, they will start to break up and slough off the top dead layer of the skin. And as they do that, more sun can get into your skin and you're, you're slightly higher risk of getting a sunburn. So that's why they have to have that warning. But when it's in a sunscreen, there's really no need for that warning. But alpha hydroxy acids, they are great moisturizing ingredients. They're humectants, they hold on to water, but as they break up that dead stuff, they soften the skin of dry, crusty stuff. So they're really good ingredients. It's too bad that this, this doesn't exist in some sort of fragrance-free version. Check it out, you guys. Neutrogena is all up on the turmeric action. Now, turmeric in skincare products, I have a video on it. it it's an antioxidant, it's anti-inflammatory, but it can be very irritating and it has bioavailability issues, meaning it's, it's just very difficult to formulate into skincare products and have it be such that it actually does anything. Um, but they have this fragrance containing moisturizer with it. They also have a mist. Oh, jeez. Now, mists, I actually, actually like the, all right, I don't recommend facial sprays or anything because basically when you spritz liquid on your skin it evaporates and can pull more water out of your skin and dry out your skin. If you have a mist that you're really into it's better to use it on your skin like right before you put on your moisturizer for example uh, to slow down or prevent that excess evaporation and take advantage of whatever potential active ingredients might be in it. Um, but yeah this is just kind of like a uh, it's shot in the dark with the turmeric, and then you have the fragrance in there, so yeah, I don't recommend that. Um, and then, what is this? A mousse cleanser. Then they have a cleanser. I kind of like that pump. These are... These are... $9.99, $9.99. $30 uh, for perfumey turmeric, <laughs> but they're BOGO, buy one get one 50% off here. I really want the watermelon skincare trend to die. It's awful. Remember when everything was all about charcoal a few years ago? And I mean, it's still there, like looking at you, Biore, but the watermelon trend, just stop. <laughs> Because it's like the worst watermelon fragrance, like a Jolly Rancher. Like, who wants that in their face? I don't get it. I don't get it. This product's pretty good, actually. The um, Acne Bar Soap. It's got salicylic acid. It has charcoal in it, which can be drying, but um, can kind of help uh, with oiliness. And there's no fragrance in this. This is, this is a good one. I, I actually like this brand. They have a few good products. This is the only one I have here, though. This brand, I've never heard of before, but they have a chemical sunscreen here. It's a very low SPF, like that's not enough. I mean, it's okay if you're inside all day, 
um, but this doesn't appear to have any fragrance. This seems like it could be a decent everyday moisturizer. Um, no cast. So that's kind of interesting. And I see they also have, so that's $7.99. I see they also have a night cream that is a 2% hydroquinone cream. Similar to like Ambi Fade Cream. Um, obviously it has fragrance. Pretty much all hydroquinone creams do. And then... Oops, so the, let me put that back. So the night cream was $10.99. Now they had to get in on the micellar water action as well. Citrus fruit. That's that's fragrancy, but that's not the worst micellar water. That's $7.99. Then they have a fragrance containing stem cell cream. Uh this just looks like a heavy duty moisturizer. I would skip that. It's $4.99. I have two versions of it. I'm not sure what the difference between the two are, but I do know these have fragrance. Jeez. They're even in on the wipes and the, oh god, the peel off masks. Even worse. Walgreens doesn't have much of a selection of the simple products, but they are very good. I particularly enjoy this moisturizing facial wash. Um, cruelty free and vegan. But again, if you're a drugstore brand, it's like a rule. You have to have wipes. I can't. So I did in fact snag a bottle of this how to wash hand soap because um, I need more hand soap going through it. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this shop with me video in good old Walgreens. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.